has brought us into his banqueting hall and his banner over us is love. Love is kind. His banner over us is love. His banner over us is love. Good day, dear viewer, and welcome to Bible Banquet. Thank you so much for being a part of this Bible study moment. The French philosopher Paul Ricoeur wrote a lot about the past. He was known to have differentiated between the past that is no longer and the past that is still relevant and meaningful for contemporary times. The Psalms emphasized this second usage of the past as they bridge the temporal distance between the past and the present involving us in Israel's past history and reminding us that the same Yahweh who acted in the past can act similarly in the present. Let's speak of the Psalms once again as we learn lessons of the past. Join us, Salviangwe Kubanfo, Theodore Dixon and Constance Mosu. We'd like to kick off with a prayer from Constance. Dear Father in heaven, we come before you today during this hour of study, asking, O oh God, that your presence will be with us here. Forgive us our sins and may your Holy Spirit make the connection that you have provided for us so that we will hear you speak to us as we discuss this lesson. We pray for our viewer, our listener. We ask that you bless him, bless her, and we pray for our crew members and all our equipment. We pray for the environment that you saturate this whole place with your presence. We ask in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Thank you so much, dear viewers, on YouTube, on Facebook, and on Satellite TV for being there for us, for studying day after day, for praying and encouraging us in diverse ways. We love you so much, and as usual, we would say we would not get tired of saying it over and over again. Today we're looking at the Psalms, and we want to learn lessons of the past. Our first reading will be taken from Psalm 78, Psalm 78 lines 12, and then um, 18 to 25, as well as lines 38 and 39. We'll also be reading Psalm 105, lines 7 to 10, 17 to 19, 23 to 27, and 42 to 45. And we will end with Psalm 106, lines 4 to 9. I start first reading from Psalm 78. I'm reading lines 12 and then 18 to 25. Line 12 says from the New King James Version, Marvelous things he did in the sight of their fathers in the land of Egypt, in the field of Zoan. Lines 18 to 25. And they tested God in their heart by asking for the food of their fancy. Yes, they spoke against God. They said, Can God prepare a table in the wilderness? Behold, he struck the rock so that the waters gushed out and the streams overflowed. Can he give bread also? Can he provide meat for his people? Therefore the Lord heard this and was furious. So a fire was kindled against Jacob, and anger also came up against Israel, because they did not believe in God and did not trust in his salvation. Yet he had commanded the clouds above and opened the doors of heaven, had rained down manna on them to eat and given them of the bread of heaven. Men ate angels' food. He sent them food to the full. And I'll end with lines 38 and 39. But he, being full of compassion, forgave their iniquity and did not destroy them. Yes, many a time he turned his anger away and did not stir up all his wrath. For he remembered that they were but flesh, a breath that passes away and does not come again. Amen. 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 
I'll be reading from Psalm 105, lines 7 to 10, 17 to 19, 23 to 27, and 42 to 45. From the New King James Version, verse 7. He is the Lord our God. His judgments are in all the earth. He remembers his covenant forever, the word which he commanded for a thousand generations, the covenant which he made with Abraham and his oath to Isaac, and he confirmed it to Jacob for a statue, to Israel as an everlasting covenant. 17. He sent a man before them, Joseph, who was sold as a slave. They hurt his feet with fetters. He was laid in irons until and the time that his word came to pass. The word of the Lord tested him. Line 23 to 27. Israel also came to Egypt, into Egypt, and Jacob dwelt in the land of Ham. He increased his people greatly and made them stronger than their enemies. He turned their hearts to hate his people, to deal craftily with his people. He sent Moses, his servant, and Aaron, whom he had chosen. They performed his signs among them and wonders in the land of Ham. Finally, I'll go to 42 to 45. For he remembered his holy promise, and Abraham his servant. He brought out his people with joy, his chosen ones with gladness. He gave them the lands of the Gentiles, and they inherited the labor of the nations, that they might observe his statutes and keep his laws. Praise the Lord. Amen. Amen. I'm reading Psalm 106, right. lines 6 to 9. Four to nine. Lines 49, sorry. Reading from New King James Version. Remember me, O Lord, with the favor you have toward your people. O oh, visit me with your salvation, that I may see the benefits of your chosen ones, that I may rejoice in the gladness of your nation, that I may glory with your inheritance. We have sinned with our fathers. We have committed iniquity. We have done wickedly. Our fathers in Egypt did not understand your wonders. They did not remember the multitude of your mercies, but rebelled by the sea, the Red Sea. Nevertheless, he saved them for his name's sake, that he might make his mighty power known. He rebuked the Red Sea also, and it dried up. So he led them through the depths as through the wilderness. Amen. 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 So, reading through the various psalms we read, that's Psalm 78, 105, and 106, we find the recollections of Israel's past history and their experience, that is, their walk with God. Um, what different dimensions of these past experiences Israel had with God do we find highlighted in these psalms? I, I looked at um, Psalm 105 and I found like seven references here. Um, line 9 talked about God's covenant with Abraham and then his oath to Isaac. Then he, he confirmed the covenant with Jacob, line 10. And then he made an everlasting covenant with Israel. We also see that um, that promise was to give them the land of Egypt. And then in online 17, Joseph was introduced as a foreigner for Israel, you know, bringing them into Egypt for, for shelter during the, the famine. And then we have Israel coming out of Egypt, talking about the Exodus. Um, and the Lord giving them the land which he promised. Of course, on line 26, we see that Moses and Aaron were the instruments that God used in bringing the Israelites out of Egypt. So in all of these narratives, at the, which happened at different times, we see a progression from the call in Genesis chapter 12, progressing, the covenant is renewed, 
and then there is a, an affirmation of promise even when um, they had to go to Egypt God also followed them and he had to do a lot of wonders in Egypt including you know the plagues the various plagues just for the sake of Israel's you know for fulfilling his promise of kindness towards them and then bringing them through the wilderness all the years um, 40 years providing for them and now we see so it's a whole lot of history talking about the life and times of ancient Israel under God's divine leadership and providence. Mm. Now we do find out that um, in some of the portions that we read that uh, the Israelites weren't always faithful. They, they sinned at some moments against God. And uh, how did God respond to Israel in spite of their sin? God always showed Israel mercy mm -hmm. and compassion. In fact, some of the portions I read, I wonder, what kind of God is this? And, you know, when I, th I think it was in Psalm 78, yes. that uh, I, I, I can't believe. I think line 38, yeah. Is it line 38? Line 38, yeah. 38 and Scary. 39. Let me see if that's... You mean God's compassion? Yeah, but I wanted to... I wanted to refer to where they said, well, God, I think I do. God sent us, he, he struck the, the rock. That was yeah, the line 20. Yeah, yeah, line so, 20. Yeah, he struck so the rock eight, and he brought water yeah, and so the stream so. flowed. But can he can give us uh, bread. bread in the wilderness? <laughs> can he give up provide <laughs> meat? <laughs> and I, I, I did like this. <laughs> That's how I did when I read it again. I said this was my first time of reading it. And I went, what would God do? You know? He flogged them a little, and then he came back, and he, he said... He had compassion. He had compassion. Mm. He remained faithful to his covenant. Mm. And mm. then, I think, Sami, you are the one who read where God said, he remembered that they were flesh, yeah. mm. and a that breath, the that, breath that that would, you know, would disappear, so to speak. He created them. He knew their weaknesses. He knew their vulnerability. And God, you know, sometimes we feel he's high-handed. He's not. Mm. God is too compassionate to let us go. Honestly, this God loves us. Mm. He created us to love us. He created us to, to, to live with him forever. So regardless of what we do, he is not willing to let go. He's not willing to let go. Mm. And God who sent Jesus Christ said, after sending my only begotten son, what more can I not yeah. do? Mm. Wow. Um, now, Israel sins, God responds, like you said, by showing mercy on, on Israel all the time. How did Israel, in turn, respond to God's faithfulness going through these harms? Yeah, we see that Israel, you know, the people vacillated from from at one point they are obedient, at another point they are disobedient, mm -hmm. at another point they call for repentance, at another time they, pray, they are praising God, just like a pendulum swinging up and down. You know? <laughs> but, but I think um, at some point they recognize the fact that um, they, the Lord has been merciful to them. Mm -hmm. And so Psalm 106 begins with um, thanksgiving because of the joy of forgiveness. So there is praise. There is repentance mm. because, um, of course, when God is consistent and faithful in his blessings, even the, the most foolish will experience it. Mm. So, so that moment of having experienced God's faithfulness in spite of their foolishness led them into surrender. So they, they thank God. Um, you, you can see the uh, declaration of God's praise here. Um, if you go to line 2, and three of Psalm 106, who can alter the mighty acts of the Lord, mm. who can declare all his praise. Blessed are those who keep justice, and he who does righteousness at all times. So they declare the fact that God keeps righteousness at all times, in spite of their own sinfulness. And then mm -hmm. when you go to line, line six of Psalm 106, they turn to acknowledge their sins now. We have sinned with our fathers. 
and have committed iniquity. We have done wickedly. Our fathers in Egypt did not understand. So you can also see them come to acknowledge the fact that they have sinned. So they responded in repentance and they responded in, in praise. praise to God. Mm. And you know that um, these, uh, these psalms are called salvation history psalms. They, yeah. they, they teach me something new about Israel. It's so easy for us to condemn them and jettison yeah. them. But you see, one of the things they teach me is that when you have a child, and you teach that child the way of God, and you do all your best. Even if that child leaves home and wanders away, he doesn't forget. Mm. Yes. That's one thing I saw here. It's true. You know, sometimes parents give up, but do your part and follow that child up with prayer. Mm. That child will come back. He, even in his rebellious moments, he will remember the God of his father. Mm. That's what I see. Regarding, in fact, there was even time God said, I know they are just asking for forgiveness, but it's not from their hearts. <laughs> that was in one of these <laughs> Psalms. But Israel never forgot the God who made them, even when, while they were in rebellion. And that was very encouraging. That's still very encouraging to me. Yes. yes. Wow. Let's read a little more. Psalm 80, this time around, reading lines 8 to 15. Um, try to read that very quickly. It says, You have bought a vine of Egypt, out of Egypt. You have cast out the nations and planted it. You prepared room for it and caused it to take deep root, and it filled the land. The hills were covered with its shadow and the mighty cedars with its boughs. She sent out her boughs to the sea and her branches to the river. Why have you broken down her hedges so that all who pass by the way pluck her fruit? The boar out of the woods uproot it, and the wild beast of the field devours it. Return, we beseech you, O God of hosts, to look down from heaven and see, and visit this vine and the vineyard which your right hand has planted, and the branch that you made strong for yourself. Verses 18 and 19. Then we will not turn back from you, Revive us, and we will call upon your name. Restore us, O Lord, God of hosts. Cause your face to shine, and we shall be saved. we we'll also read Numbers mm -hmm. 6, verses 22 to 27. Numbers 6, 22 to 27 is the benediction. Mm -hmm. And the Lord spoke to Moses, saying, Speak to Aaron and his sons, saying, this is the way you shall bless the children of Israel. Say to them, The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. So they shall put my name on the children of Israel and I will bless them. Amen. 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 Let's have um, Constance read some. 135 lines 3, 4, 6 to 10, and then 12 to 14. Psalm 135 yeah. lines 3 and 4. Praise the Lord, for the Lord is good. Sing praises to his name, for it is pleasant. For the Lord has chosen Jacob for himself, Israel for his special treasure. Mm. 6 to 10. Whatever the Lord pleases, he does, in heaven and in earth, in the seas and in all deep places. He causes the vapors to ascend from the ends of the earth. He makes lightning for the rain. He brings the wind out of his treasuries. He destroyed the firstborn of Egypt, both of man and beast. He sends signs and wonders into the midst of you, O Egypt, upon Pharaoh and all his servants. And then I'll read lines 12 to 14. And give their land as a heritage, a heritage to Israel, his people. Your name, O Lord, endures forever. Your fame, O Lord, throughout all generations. For the Lord will judge his people, and he will have compassion on his servants. On his servants. Amen. 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 So let's start from Psalm 80. In that psalm, we find a theme of restoration, and it's emphasized multiple times. How does this restoration evoke the priestly blessings of Numbers, chapter 6, verses 22 and 20 to 27, which appeared already? If we return to Psalm 80, you discover that um, on lines 3, 
seven um, and nine, 20, 19. 14, 18, and 19. 19. You see the language of restore, return, revive. Mm. Use. Restore is used at three occasions. And um, okay. where restore mm. is used, it says, Restore us, O God, cause your face to shine. Mm. And it comes again, cause your face to shine, and we will be saved. That, that phrase is take, you know, mm. it's repeated three times. Mm. Then we see the language of um, return, we beseech you. And that, cause your face to shine, evokes the priestly you know, the benediction that, that I read in um, Numbers 22. Mm. It is, it's like the psalmist was asking for God's countenance to shine upon the people because he knew that, it, it, like, like I read here, like I read here on Numbers chapter 6, verse 27, it says, So they shall put my name on the children of Israel, and I will bless them. Mm. So, when they began to evoke the, the priestly psalm, it's like, let your name be put in our hearts that we may receive your blessing. They were asking for God's blessing. Mm. They were asking for God's presence. And they recognized the fact that for them to be restored, God needs to be involved. Mm. It is a function of, it's an act of God mm. Mm. and not any human being's effort. So I think that's, that will happen. They knew the source of the blessings. Mm -hmm. They knew the source of restoration and the they they went back to yeah. Let's look at uh, Psalm 135, I think, or since you're the one who read that. Uh, what four major events highlight God's supremacy in history in that psalm? Psalm 135. Yes. Okay. We see creation. Okay. We see... Um, the return of the children of Israel from Egypt to mm -hmm. the That's promised the land. Exodus story. We also see even the giving them of the land that they didn't deserve. And then the last one, 135. Um, I think there's something about Israel. Yes, Israel something about before. Israel. Yeah, the formation the of the, 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 the nation, nation of the nation Israel. Of yeah, Israel. Israel. Yes, yes. Formation. So those four. So yeah. why are they important? The, the importance hinges of the fact on the fact that all of these acts in history represent God's sovereignty. Hmm. They reveal the fact that only God could have made it possible. Hmm. Of course, creation. How did He create? By the word of His mouth, hmm. with, which establishes His supremacy over the elements. And then we talk about um, Exodus. Hmm. You see, the Exodus motif continues to run through history today. Mm. Everything you talk about, Exodus motive, and what is it about Exodus motive? You think about God's wonder, the, the, the plagues in Egypt, how he silenced the Egyptian gods, especially at the time when the, the Egyptian gods have been exalted to the point of being worshipped. The mm. pharaohs exalted themselves to be worshipped. And then you look at the, the, the Red Sea, the parting of the waters. Nothing else would have made that possible except mm. the mighty hand of God. Mm. And then you come to Mount Sinai when God thundered in Exodus 19 and shook the foundations mm. and then established himself and called Israel out of nothing. And then the promise of the land. When we look at Israel's occupation of um, the Canaanite city-states, it doesn't really make sense because we just read stories. But imagine that an established city-state was overtaken the Jebusite, the Ammonite, mm -hmm. the Amorite, the, the Hittites, everything, Hittites. by wanderers who had no home, who had no army, who had nothing. No army, really. they had nothing. 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 So only God would have made that possible. So mm -hmm. as we look at it, you see that it was the hand of God mm -hmm. that made all that possible. Even mm -hmm. in creation story, mm -hmm. regardless of how scientists are arguing and saying there was a big bang and there is chaos, all kinds of things, there is no way. I know one or two scientists that even became creationists creationist because of what they discovered in their evolutionary theory. And they mm. said it's not possible. This can't be possible. Some, and sometimes even many scientists, even though they don't want to open their mouth and say God, they will say that there is 
a force. Yes, a force some there power. is a force, <laughs> there is some power that they don't know. So even it is difficult for anybody to completely deny yeah. the creation story. That's right. That's right. Um, we have seen God leading Israel through these various stories in spite of their unfaithfulness. How can this serve as an encouragement to us amidst our own day-to-day -day struggles in our Christian experience? God is faithful. God is gracious. Even in our unworthiness, mm. He is still faithful. So it, it's not a guarantee for us to continue in sin. Mm. It's not a guarantee because when we do that, we abuse His grace. But it is an encouragement that even when we have fallen, He is always there waiting for us to rise up. He doesn't move. He's there. All He wants us to do is to acknowledge Him and come back to Him. And remember that, like I said, He is the source of our restoration. He is the blessing giver. And He can always give to us. So when we turn back to Him, when we respond to His call, He's always there to receive us. Of course, Hebrews chapter 4 verses 16 to, you know, 14 to 16. Let us come boldly to the throne of grace that we may obtain help and receive Thomas. grace in times of need. So he's always there. You know, I had a friend who said Jesus has died for us on the cross and he has died because of all our sins. So he has forgiven us the past, the present, and the future. And honestly, he meant he's a good, well, he's a good Christian. And he says it doesn't matter what you do, you'll be saved. And he doesn't really bother about trying to do the right. You know, he drinks, it doesn't matter, he whatever. But he claims he loves the Lord, but he says Jesus saved him at the point where Jesus died on the cross. I think that is going to, you know, it's too extreme. Like Theodore said, we cannot take God's mercy for granted. For sure. My reaction would be, Jesus, God, you love me so much, you gave your only begotten son. So I give my life to you, my devotion, and ask that, please, may I be able on a daily basis, through the help of the Holy Spirit, respond to your love mm -hmm. so that I don't take your love for granted. Wow. Yes. Thank you so much for sharing uh, these insights with us. Well, that's the order to pray for us at this moment. Thank you, Heavenly Father, for the rich blessings we see in history, particularly your wonders in the life of ancient Israel. Your compassion is part of their sinfulness. Help us, O Lord, to know that you are faithful, that in spite of our sinfulness, we will run back to you, knowing fully well that you bless us. Bless our viewers today. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Thank you so much for studying with us. We believe you've learned a lot of lessons from the past. We have learned as well. And we pray that we will put these lessons into practice and continue to remember God's deliverance and presence in our lives. Until we come your way again, remain blessed. His banner over us is love. His banner over us is love. Oh